you have been learning about circles since your kindergarten days and then you notice that you're still doing circles and in every grade the difficulty level just keeps on increasing and this is why it is important that you have your basic fundamentals about circles right and this video is just about that the very basics the terminology related to circles it is absolutely necessary to get this correct before we think of going deeper into circles so get into the video right now before it all becomes a very vicious circle so come on let's go Hey guys, this is Vikash Sharma welcoming you on behalf of Exponent to Success to yet another of our videos. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel as yet, do subscribe to it right now and do not forget to click on the bell notification too. So like I said, this video is only about circles and the very basics of circles, the terms related to circles, the parts of a circle. And it is very important to understand what's going on right here because this is what is going to avoid you from all problems, especially those problems which relate to circles. So do get these things right into your head. Do not let them go around you because like they say that things that go around come around. Especially in case of circles, that's true that if you let it go around you, it will come back to haunt you later. So don't get into that vicious circle. Get it right into your head so that all things are clear. And if you don't do that, I'm sure you must have heard another thing related to circles that you will be going around in circles to look for these things again. So get them right into your head right now. So first let us understand what a circle is. Well, uh, by definition, a circle is a set of all points which are equidistant from a certain given fixed point. So suppose we have a point here and let us say that three centimeters from that there is another point and then another point three centimeters on this side and another point three centimeters on this side and another point three centimeters on this side and then another point here and here and here and here and you see that if you join all these points it will make a circle for you so not a perfect circle but this is what it will look like if you join all these points so let me start with a proper circle and explain all the terms related to a circle so let us say that this is a circle that we have and this is equidistant from all from this point in the center let us call that point o so when we say that this is equidistant that means from point o if you take all the points which are at the same distance from o if we join all those points this is what you get this curve is known as a circle and you would agree that if we have a line connecting from this place to this place let's say that distance is five centimeters what do you think the distance from this place to this place would be well again it will be five centimeters isn't it because this part was already equidistant from the given fixed point O. So let us first understand the terms related to circle or the terminology of a circle or the parts of a circle. So if you look at this point in the center, which is point O, that is called the center of the circle. And all this thing that you see around the blue part of it is called the circumference of the circle which means the boundary which is surrounding this is called the circumference. Like in squares or rectangles, the boundary around it is called the perimeter. The same way the perimeter of a circle is called, is given a special name, which is circumference. So if we look at the circumference, the circumference of a circle divides a certain plane into three parts. One is the interior of the circle. So all things which lie inside the circle, for example, the point P here lies inside the circle. So that lies in the interior of the circle. If we look at a point here, which is point Q, that is in the exterior of a circle. And if we look for a point here, which is R, that is on the circle. So the three parts that a circle divides a plane into are on the circle, interior of the circle, and exterior of the circle. Uh, let us call this A and this is B. So OA and OB we know are equal because they are both 5 centimeters. They start from the center and they touch the circumference which is a set of points which are equidistant from the point O and these are called the radius of the circle or if I uh, talk about plurals they are called radii. So radius of the circle or radii of the circle 
and there's another thing that we have that if we have a line which passes through the center and touches the circumference on two parts of the circle then that line is called the diameter so let me call this uh, say d e so d e is diameter and diameter as you see is consists of two radius because o e is also a radius and o d is also a radius so i can write here o d is equal to o e is equal to o a is equal to o b and d e is the diameter and since it is o d plus o e we can say that it is two times the radius so if the radius is r it is two times r okay there are now some other things to look at and if we look at those if we look at the distance from a to b from here to here this is called an arc so whenever we want to write or name an arc we write the two points of the arc so a b and on top of that we make this arc like thing so to say or to signify that a b is an arc now a b is a minor arc here because it connects a short part of the circle now there is another arc if you see uh, the one that i am marking in purple right now which starts from e a and it goes around the circle like this and comes back to b so to name this we take generally take three points in the arc so let us say uh, i'll take point a r b so from a it starts goes through r comes back to b that is also an arc and that is called a major arc so major arc because it covers a greater portion of the distance in the circle now as you see a circle is divided into two parts by its diameter so any diameter that you have in the circle will divide a circle into two parts so each part of that which the circle has been divided into by a diameter is called a semicircle so to say that all this portion that you see here this is a semicircle now there's another thing that to be looked at if we look at the center here if we look start from b b o a so let us say b o a means the portion which is inside the circle here all this this if you look closely it looks like a pizza slice or a cake slice and this portion is called the sector of the circle sector so sector also is of two kinds one is a minor sector and one is a major sector so this boa that i have colored in red is the minor sector because it is a portion which is less than a semicircle that portion of the circle is called a minor sector and then apart from that there is a major sector also so if i color all this portion in green all this purple portion that is already there plus all the portion which is not red basically everything including excluding the red which is colored in green is the major sector and that is also written as boa only we say sector major sector boa now there are some other things also that i want to talk about especially the parts of a circle so i'll uh, erase all of this and come back with a fresh circle because this already has become very cluttered up so here we have another circle which uh, let us say that this is the center which is again o and this time let me take a line which goes from here to here and let me call that line as uh, a b now a b if you see is called a chord and same way if we take another line let us name that as c d so c d is also a chord now can you say which one is longer a b or c d so obviously c d is longer because first of all if we look at the segment cut by c d you see that the segment cut by it is larger in area than the segment cut off by a b so this portion here is called the segment which i forgot to mention earlier so all this portion cut off by the chord is called a segment so segment again is of two types so there is a segment 
and this portion that we see AB is minor segment and then there's an AB which is not the pink portion but all other portion here apart from the one that is already shaded is the major segment. So like we see this thing is clear that the chord CD is longer than the chord AB and that is because it is closer to the center than AB is. So the chord which is closer to the center will be a longer chord inside the same circle. And can you guess which one will be the longest chord? Well, yes, you guessed it right. Any chord that goes through the center is the longest chord because that is the diameter of the circle. It is right passing through the center. So it can't be any longer than that. So a diameter is also called the longest chord. So if we draw a line from A to O and from B to O, O is the center you must remember and AB is a chord uh, or any two points on the circumference of the circle and they make an angle between them which is angle AOB. So if we look at angle AOB, that's called the central angle. The central angle as you see, see this is an acute angle and then there is another central angle which is made by the major arc AB which is the angle here which will be a reflex angle and if there is a diameter which is going across uh, the center then if we look at that angle it will be 180 degrees. Now this line segment was to drawn to the center of the circle but in, instead of that if we take a line from say A to any other part of the circle say this part on the circumference and from B to this part on the circumference. Now this also makes an angle here which is uh, let us call that point as M. So if we look at angle AMB that's called an inscribed angle. Sometimes we also call it the subtended angle. So normally we say that it's the angle subtended by the arc AB on the center or angle subtended by the arc AB on the circumference of the circle. So it's called the inscribed angle or the subtended angle. And then the last two things that we need to look at are these. Let us say that we have a line, a line like this which is passing through the circle. Let us say it intersects at the points P and Q. So this PQ, line PQ and line we indicate like this, that this is a line, is called the secant line. A secant line is a line which intersects the circle at any two points on the circumference. And it has to be exactly two points which are P and Q which you see are on the circumference of the circle. Now like this there can be another line let's say a line like this. What can you say about this line? Is this line a secant? Well no this cannot be called a secant because as you see this is touching the circle only at one point. So let us call that point x. So since it is touching the circle only at one point uh, let's call this say w. So we can say that Wx is a tangent to the circle. So a tangent is a line which touches the circle only at one point on the circumference of the circle. And a secant line is a line which passes through the circle and intersects the circle at at least two points. So that is the major difference between tangent and secant. And you already have told you that this is the central angle and this is the inscribed angle and this is AB is a chord, AO you know is the radius, CD is also a chord. Okay one more thing that I wanted to tell you about was this sector and segment. Now these are two things which always confused me till a very long time they used to conf confuse me that which one is a sector and which one is a segment. I never understood that. I could never register that in my mind that what is a sector and what is a segment. 
because these are both similar sounding words but you know when you associate things with something it always comes to mind that uh, you will never forget so the way i associated it was that sector as you know that's a o b is a sector that if we start from a go up to o and then come back to b so all this portion inside is called a sector like i said it also resembles a slice so if you are taking a circle as a pizza or a cake then a slice of the cake or a slice of the pizza is called the sector and as you see there is one letter in both of these which is this letter c so c here and c here now a sector and slice both contain a c whereas a segment has no c in it so that is the way i used to differentiate that if it is a slice a slice has c in it and therefore this portion should be a sector because the sector also has a c in it Okay, one more thing that I wanted to tell you was about circles. That circles never really troubled me or bothered me, and probably the reason for that was that I had my fundamentals in place and I had the basics all clear. But you know, they did start making becoming a confusion or they start started becoming a problem for me when all the theorems started coming in. But you know, the best thing that I love about mathematics is that everything has a proof, everything has a why behind it. and if you really understand the why behind it it all becomes super easy and that's what you have to do you have to understand why a theorem actually works what is the proof behind it if you understand the proof behind it if you understand the why behind it you are never likely to forget a theorem and that is one recommendation that i want to give you that always have a curious mind always think about why this happens so instead of accepting a theorem that you have to mug up or to you have to learn it by heart you don't have to learn it you just have to understand the why it happens and once the why becomes clear i am sure you will not have to learn it because it your basics will be clear you will know why that theorem works and you can make the theorems yourself because you know the why behind it and like i have been talking about theorems of circles for so long that is exactly what is in the agenda in the next video and therefore i would suggest that you click on my picture here so that you get subscribed to the channel and once you do do not forget to click on the notification bell and yes one more thing watch these videos appearing on the screen they will be very good for you take care god bless